great cost, the siege on Kerbin has been victorious. Now, unfortunately, the ultimate fate of the Aegis and her crew is unknown, though now our coalition only has one more objective to complete, and that is to take back the KSC and restore HKA. So after a long journey from the west side of the continent, the two groups of tanks and the group of jets are imminently about to take back the KSC. Taking low curb in orbit and destroying the Cerberus wasn't easy, so I'm not expecting this to be easy either, especially with our assets so thinly scattered across the length of the continent. But with the help from HKA's allies that we have, we're going to put up a good fight. Though with the resources that GMI and their friends have, I imagine they will too. So now that our tank platoons are so very close to the KSC, I imagine they're going to run into some GMI patrols. Our closest to the KSC is Platoon A, but it's also the largest, and it's guarding the HKA top brass. At least, what remains of it after the invasion. Further south, there's Platoon B, a much smaller group. Although they're not really supposed to do their own offensive, they are going to be able to do some proper damage if they get a good flank on the GMI forces as they engage Platoon A. And of course, the real damage dealers of the operation. Two multi-purpose jets, one high-speed bomber currently making their way over the mountains, going directly towards the KSC. The pilots have been told to engage all GMI assets at will, Although orders for the fighters specifically entail defending the high-speed bomber and jumping between the two tank platoons. Now although we have companies from all over Kerbin putting together resources to finally destroy GMI, this still isn't going to be easy. GMI are a brutal and lawless faction hardened by the blockade of Kerbin since they invaded. Whereas the various pilots from different allies and the remaining HKA members are certainly lacking practice. If we lose now, then there's nothing stopping Kerbin from trying again, but it will be the end of HKA. We cannot let this operation fail, not after what happened during the siege. Though we haven't forgotten about those that GMI made prisoners of. Locked away in the KSC for nearly 300 days now, they are in desperate need of rescue, especially Bill. Lucky for us, many of the HKA pilots currently fighting the battle were prisoners of GMI released on bail, which should come in handy when it comes to freeing Bill and the other prisoners. Oh, 
So Platoon A has been spotted by a GMI drone-assisted patrol, who unfortunately have the backup of a hostile VTOL. Platoon A is held out though and they request the assistance of the Defiance. Though with both the VTOL's cluster bombs deployed, we can't guarantee that this won't turn into a chase for the Defiance, or potentially a trap to draw the Defiance away from the Arkbird. We aren't left with much choice though, as Platoon A and Ultimate Victory hang in the balance. <laughs> The Defiance has been engaged by a KSU-43, an elite and extremely maneuverable dogfighter. This won't be an easy fight. The Defiance may be tough, but it's not a dedicated dogfighter like the KSU-43. It just doesn't have the same air superiority abilities. But this is a fight that a Defiance has to win if we're to have any hope of taking back the KSC. Unable to outmaneuver the KSU-43, the Defiance is attempting to outsmart it, opting for a special maneuver. The Defiance pitches up, cuts the engines, and glides upwards, continuously losing speed in a controlled stall, and opening the aero brake to bring it just behind the KSU-43, where it can make an easy kill. KSU-43 destroyed and its pilot bailed, the Defiance is victorious. The Defiance now has the opportunity to chase down the A120 and provide support to the platoon on the ground. This is where the Defiance will really shine as it is primarily an anti-tank aircraft. Providing close air support is the Defiance's speciality. The Defiance has fired one of its AGM missiles guided by its targeting pod, which should have no problem destroying one of these GMI drones. And although the Defiance has been successful, it's facing quite heavy anti-air fire as it flies overhead. Luckily, this doesn't seem to be a challenge for the Defiance. Now that the Defiance has left, and the Vikas finds it too risky to divert the JSF. The platoon must face the GMI patrol one on one. 
Both sides are first sending in their drones to size each other up. The Centurion, a drone derived from an old HK design, meets the GMI Hellraiser in the field. Centurion is destroyed by the GMI MBT after having taken out the Hellraiser. The HKA MBT and Vicus now agree to move forward to meet the two remaining GMI tanks. The first of which being the Buzz, based off GMI's own old design. The second being the MBT, a retired UKSN design, much the same as the HKA MBT. <laughs> The GMI tanks have caught onto our tactics and are now moving to intercept us in the field. This is what the situation looks like at the moment. A narrow strip between the two sides where I imagine many shots will be fired. And the victor of this battle determined. <laughs> The Vicus has been disabled by the GMI MBT and in response, the HKA MBT has destroyed the Buzz and the GMI MBT. <laughs> With the bomber destroyed, HK have defeated the GMI patrol and GMI's attempts to counterattack them. The war isn't won yet though. The coalition must march on the KSC. Save Bill, re-establish HKA as a power, and oust GMI's position on Kerbin. Oh, we are not going. There's no... 